Today, I'm going to be showing you how to solve the Rubik's Cube using the Roo method. So, first thing first, I'm going to have four annotations on the screen for the first like minute or two of this video. These are not going to take you to different times in the video, they're going to take you to a separate video. Um, and that video, I'll go, in, go into depth on each step, so I'll have one for, for um, so if you struggle for, with, um, if you struggle with step one, which is first block, then I'll, you can watch a video on that. Um, you can watch a video on second block, CMLL. Or LSC. Um, so I'll go in more in depth than I do in this video in each of those videos. But without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing you do in the root method is make a one by two by three block. Now there's some things you need to note before doing this. One, you don't want to just go solving um, your block at whichever is the easiest way. Um, you can, but that's going to make it very hard for you in the long term if you get used to that. What you want to do is pick two colors you like. Um, most people pick white and yellow. I personally do um, red and orange. That's just how what I do. But if you, but most people just do white and yellow. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing for this tutorial. So if you pick white and yellow, then you what you can have to do is you have eight starting block um, possibilities. So this is what the first block looks like. Take a look at it. And why I say there's eight is imagine you have the white center down here. I'll go into how to make this in a minute. Um, you you have eight possibilities on where to make the block. You can make it on the red, green, orange, or blue side. And that's just the white opportunities. Like I said, you can be dual color neutral, which means you can also do yellow ones. So you can do the blue yellow, red yellow, green yellow, and orange yellow. And what that means, you don't want to just build a white um, block. You want to do it so as white on bottom, like this. So white is the three color, if you like. Um, you don't want it to be this big amount or these small amounts, you want it to be the medium amount. And you can either do that for white or yellow if you cho choose those colors. Again, there's not some special significance to white and yellow. That's just what most people use, so I'll do it in this video. So let's go into how to solve the first block. Well, there's a couple ways to do it. But um, I'm not really going to go into every case because that's just um, that doesn't make any sense because block building, which is what you use to solve this, is a very... Um, very contemptual thing. It's not something I can just teach, but I will go through some examples. So, um, most people, and probably the best way to build a first block, a 1x2x3 block, is making a square. And a square looks like this. It's just four pieces um, together. Um, and to build a square, you basically just need a pair of pieces, which you usually have. So, a pair of pieces an edge, and you connect the pair to the edge. That's simple. So, um, but the thing is with Roo is you don't need to worry about the centers at all. The only center you need to worry about is the one your starting block color is. So in this case it's green. You need that to be aligned here, but you don't need you care about any of the other centers. So um, we do need green aligned here. So let's just go through an example here. Um, this is um, green and white here. So that means I need a green and white edge right here. I'll put that with the center and then move it down. Like I said before, you can go to my um, specific first block video. Um, you can The link's in the description or you can just click the annotation and that will go more into depth on this. But that's basically a simple way of building the first 2x2x1 two by two by, um, block. Then what you do after that is you make another pair to go here. And this is um, extending it. So we see here that we need a green, white, and orange pair. Okay, so we find a green, white, and orange pair. So for extending this block, we just make another pair, like I said before. So um, we can see what pair we need by just looking at what the color opposite of the first color is. So this is red here. Color opposite to that is orange. So we need an orange, green, and white pair. Or you can just look at it like the centers if your white center is aligned. You can just, for beginners, align the center. I see this is white, green, orange, white, green, and orange pair. So here's the white, white, green, and orange corner. That's what you want to start with. Find the green and orange pair because white is on bottom, so we don't need extra piece. It's right here. We can just pair them up. So we um, want to pair the two pieces up without affecting this. That's usually very easy. Um, you just want to change the corner's orientation until you get something like this where you can just hide the first corner, 
putting up, putting in the edge, that pair them up. So you basically just make this, add the pair in. And um, something people struggle with sometimes, especially when you're coming from CFOP, is people just think, oh, I'll just insert this pair. When really you don't need a, because because of the amount of freedom you get when you're just you you don't have a cost and everything, you can just go bring the block up and then move the pair in, and that solves the block. You don't need to do this this kind of bring it down. You don't need to do the normal pair insertion. But that's um, a quick way of building the first block. Um, like I said before, block building is a very um, like I said contemptu contemptual thing, and you re really just. From practice, it comes and you get really good with it. And there will be a moment when j you just go, "I got that now," and um, that happened to me. And it's you'll you'll get it. Trust me. It might be frustrating at first, but you'll get it. So that's first block, um, and that's the first step of the Roo method. Like I said before, if you struggle with that at all, I will go into more um, in depth on my other video, which you can click on the screen. Okay. So second block. Okay, so second block is um, quite easier, probably easier than um, the first block. And basically what you're doing with second block is you're just building the same thing on the right side. So this one you want to keep on the left right here, hold it, and then you're, you're going to build the block on this side. Um, so how you do this is, for starters, I'm just going to show you it like this. So um, what you want to do is look at what this color was what the big color on your starting block was, green, the bottom color is white, what's opposite of green? Blue. So we need a blue and white edge, right here. So we want to rotate it, so without destroying this first block, so it's oriented right, so we can solve it in one turn like that. So we want this blue edge in the top layer, and we can solve it in one turn. Now one turn can also be U2, or it can just be a quarter turn. So once once it's in this position, we just want to attach it to the blue center, so we have something looking like this, and then just bring it down. Okay. And the cool th and interesting thing about second block is it doesn't matter if you do only wide turns, or it does sometimes, but most of the time it only doesn't matter if you do wide turns or just single layer turns. It might make more sense to you to do single layer turns, but you can do wide turns as well if it's easier. So once we have this edge in and we have our first block, and we just place in two pairs. Now there's other ways you can do this, but you'll notice those as you get better with this method, and there's no need for me ex to explain them. So we see that this is orange, white, and blue, so we need an orange, white, and blue corner, and then an orange and blue pair. So let's see, this is the corner, and then we need a white and blue pair, which is gonna be, um, oh, okay, so we, um, this is the pair right here. Oh, no it's not, sorry. So we want, when we have the corner, which is here, we have white, blue, and orange, which is white, blue, and orange. This is, this is supposed to go in here. We want to rotate it so white isn't facing up. We don't want this case. Now, that might already be for the case for you, but um, it sometimes isn't. So if, you, if white isn't facing up for yours, or your bottom color isn't facing up, that's fine. Just um, skip this step. But if it's not, you have to rotate it. So we do bring it, bring the corner over, bring it out of the way and then bring this down. Okay, so now we have this corner back here rotated. And now this is the part that a lot of people don't really understand. Um, and that's pairing up pieces with... A lot of people do understand it, they just don't understand it the right way. Because a lot of people, um, for this case, they would just, because we have two blues on top, this is the edge that needs to get paired up with this, they would just bring this corner down, um, move the edge back, and then bring the corner up, and that would pair these up, and you could put put it in. But with the root, you have this slice open. You don't have a cross obstructing use of the middle layer. So what you can do, and it's just as good with this, is just do a middle layer turn, bringing this edge down, move the corner in, and then bring the edge back up, like that. So now you have to pair. So there's many ways you can pair up pieces. You don't want to limit yourself to just R and U moves, um, because that's very limiting. Um, and for inserting pairs, you could, um, sometimes you'll get a case where um, you definitely don't want to just rotate and insert it like this. That's not a good idea. You never want to rotate when you're doing second block. Um, so for this case, we can just bring everything up, this whole second block thing up, do a U, 
and then bring it down. So that's this case where you have the pair on the wide end of the pair facing towards you. You just do an R wide U R wide prime. And then that solved this. Um, and again, if I'm going too fast for you, I have the um, special video on second block, which you can watch. So um, now that this pair is done, we need this pair. So we need blue, white, and red. Blue, white, and red is here. Again, white isn't facing up. So we're going to move it over its slot and then rotate this corner. Okay. And then we have the edge here because it's um, blue and red. So we want to pair these two up. So again, we can't, we can't just do this because um, when we do the thing to hide this, that's going to break this block. So we can't do that. So we'll, what we're going to do here is pair these up with the slice. So we're going to hide the edge, move the corner in, and then bring the slice up. We have this. We have the pair in the back. And um, this act actually is the same case, just mirrored of the case I did before, where the pair is like this. But we're just going to do it from the back, which is bring the Y down, do a U prime, bring the Y up. And that's it. So um, that's how you do second block. I know it could be a little bit confusing. And the thing um, that some people don't get for second block is you don't need to have the centers aligned. You don't need to misalign them if they're aligned. It's fine if they are aligned, but you don't need them aligned. Okay? It just doesn't matter because you're only caring about these two. And now what you notice when second block is done is that all you have left is just these two layers. If you only turn the middle and upper layers, then your two middle, your two blocks aren't going to get affected. So that's how we're going to solve the rest of the cube, the cube using only M and U and some other stuff. Okay, so now for the third step of the root method, which is called CMLL. Now that sounds really confusing, but um, there's a couple ways you could do this. Okay, the, the most efficient way is learning 42 algorithms, which is CMLL. They're really the only algorithms you kind of have to learn for you. Um, or you could just do it in two looks, which is nine algorithms, which you orient the corners in one, um, which you may already know. This is a headlights case, if you know it. Um, and then you permute them in another, um, but uh, only looking at the corners permutation. Or you could do it with only two algorithms, and that's what I'm going to show you here, since this is for a complete newbie. So, um, what the first algorithm is, it's called a soon. Now, I'm going to show you it in a second, but what, it, um, what you want to hold it is you want to find any corner that has yellow facing away. So, not facing up, facing away. And you might not have this, and in that case, you have a skip, and you want to skip this step. But most of the time, you'll have at least one yellow piece that is looking in one direction, not up. And then you'll have it put it facing towards you. And then once you have the yellow piece facing towards you, it doesn't matter if there's two or one, you want to do this algorithm, which is called the soon. Bring the right up, top clockwise, the right down. U, R, U2, R prime. That's the soon. And what that did is it um, changed the corners orientation, so it's going to be easier next time. So what we do again, um, and what you do is, if you, you might have to do that twice, but once you have only one yellow corner facing up, then you're um, good to go. But if you, um, if you have multiple facing up, you just do it again, and repeat it until you've got um, one yellow corner facing up. But once you have one, you want to hold it so it's in this position, so the one yellow corner is in this position, and do it again. Okay, and then um, that might solve it, or that might solve the corners of this side. But if it didn't, you're just going to do U2, and then do it again. And now all the corners are oriented. So now what you want to do is permute them. And there's only um, two, or there was one algorithm you need for this. And that algorithm goes like this. I'll show you. So if you have, you want to look around the cube and see if you have any matching corners, at least this last layer. So these don't match, these don't match, these don't match, and these don't match. So we have no matching corners. Um, and what you do if you have none matching is you just do this algorithm holding it in any orientation as long as yellow is facing up. I'll show you what to do if you do have them just in just a minute. But let's do it without. So what we're going to do is hold the cube like this. 
and then do this algorithm. And then that will bring us, um, that will change the corners orientation in a way where um, we have, so if you had none matching, then that will make one matching, so these two are matching, doesn't matter if the edge is right. These aren't, these aren't, these aren't, but this is, okay? Um, you might have already had this, and if so, you want to put them in the back, like this. So now the two matching are in the back, and then do the algorithm again. And now we have our corner solved, we're just a U away. And that's how you solve the CMLL. Okay, now we're going to do something called L LSC. That stands for last six edges. Because after we have our corner solved, all that's left to be solved of the cube is one, two, three, four, five, six edges. One of them might be solved already, but doesn't matter. So there's three kind of sub-steps of LSC. And this is where most people get put off by root, because LSC is a pretty intimidating part. But I'm going to do my best to get you through it. So if you um, are at any time confused by this step, then watch my video, it's in the corner, and um, that's the link, and then it will go very deep in the, into the explanation of LSE. But um, for just, if you're catching, if you're keeping up just fine, just continue with this. So basically, the first thing we want when we're doing LSE is an arrow. Now first you need to know how to recognize bad edges, because the first step of LSE is um, orienting all your edges. And what a good edge is, is if you look at your top side, you only have white and or yellow. So one of, one of the colors, white or yellow. See, this is a good edge because we have yellow. But it could also be white and it'd be a good, good edge. But these three are bad edges because none of them have white or yellow facing up. Let's look at the bottom. This is a bad edge because it doesn't have white facing down. But this is a good edge because it's yellow facing down. So white or yellow work on the top layers, but any other color don't doesn't. And um, there's a couple EO cases you could get, but um, basically you just want to keep doing, or the, the case you're going for is this arrow case where you have three bad in the front looking towards you, or you could have it like this, it doesn't matter. And then you have one bad edge here or here. So if you have a bad edge here, you just want to rotate these so they're in the back. If you have bad edge here, you just have them like this. Um, and what you want to do now is bring the middle up, where if you have the arrow case, I'll, I'll go into um, other cases in a second, but if you have the arrow case, bring the middle up, U prime, bring the middle up. And now you notice all your edges are either white or yellow on top. And that's what you want. Now, um, if you, there's a bunch of other cases you could get. And I'll cover those all right, and I'll cover those all in the other video. So right now, here, I'm just showing you the arrow case, but I'm covering them all, all the cases in the other video. So if you're having trouble, and you just, um, I just cover them in the other video. And there's also a website you can go to, it's Wafo's rep website, and he has all the most efficient ways to solve the EO cases. And I'll have that in the description, it's a really good way. Um, so that's EO. And now the next step is solving the UL UL and UR edges. And this can be done, this is actually really easy. What you want to do is look at the colors that are on your your left and right. Blue is on our left, green is on our right. So what we don't want to do is um, find those two edges. So we need a, um, a blue edge and a green edge. Here's a green edge, here's a blue edge. You just want to find them. And then once you've found them, you want to put them in just do U2s and M2s and put them in a position like this, where they're across from each other. So they're like this. You want them in this position, okay? Um, and you just, it's going to be pretty intuitive to put them in this position. Then once you have them in this position, you just do M, U2, M, prime. Um, and what that does is that pairs both of them up and puts them in the bottom layer. So both the edges are here and oriented and permuted. Um, so they're both paired together here. 
And then what you want to do is look at the color that's facing towards you on the bottom, on the one edge that's facing towards you on the bottom. Well, it's green. So we want to put the opposite color of green in front of us. So this is red, it's not the opposite. Green is an opposite green. Orange is an opposite green, but blue is. So we want blue corners facing towards us. Then we'll do an M2. Uh, and then align the colors here. And then we'll have these two sides solved, the L and R edges solved. And that's L and R edges, that should be pretty intuitive. The only thing you, you, you need to remember is that um, if you're like pairing up the two, you're pairing up two edges across from each other, you just do M, U2, M. Just three moves. And then the last step, oh, let me, I messed that up, let me just, um, okay. And the last step is a bit of a tricky one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, tell you to, if you want to um, really, if you're interested in getting into this method, go to Waffo's site. It's in the description. He has all the most efficient ways um, to solve these last four edges, okay, in, in the bottom of his tutorial. But if you, I'm just going to be, um, if you're just a total noob and you want to solve it and just like totally beginning, what you want to do is just keep just do what looks right. This is what I did. I know it sounds dumb, but just do what looks right. I have, um, Waffo does have the specific cases, in, and I have his his website in the description. But you just do M's and U2's until it looks right. And that's it. Um, that last step is a bit tricky, but you'll get it if you look at um, his page, which is really good. So that's how you solve the Rubik's Cube using the Roo method. Um, one thing you do want to keep in mind is you want to, um, I had a habit like this before, you want to have good finger tricks. Um, I know I'm, I shouldn't be getting to finger tricks yet, but it's really important for you because you need to be doing this M move and um, quickly. And how, how you do it is you just put your green finger in the back here on this back edge and then push. That's it. Just push and it will become natural eventually. And if you're doing the M2, you don't want to just push twice, that's fine, but it's faster if you just push with your green and push with your middle. And then for bringing the middle down, you just push with your green and it'll come down. This one's a bit tricky. But that's how you solve the Rubik's Cube using the Roo method. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you had any trouble again, I'll have um, all the um, specific videos in the description. And bye.